All right, YouTube, today we're talking about the top five money hills in Hardpoint in competitive Modern Warfare 3 at the moment. So this is taken from scrim data going into Major 1. So as you start to watch these matches next weekend and the weeks afterwards, you'll start to see some trends in how these maps are played and how these hills specifically are tending in terms of how many points are actually scored on those hills, specifically by the team that wins the rotation to them. So that's what we're talking about here, money hills. When we're talking about money hills, we're talking about those that are really important in terms of capturing that rotation so that you can score as many points as possible because it's going to be harder for the enemy team to break on in and score points for themselves. So it's important to note this takes into account more of the scoring rather than just you know being able to hold it really well. So those hills that might have a lot of white time, you're not technically scoring, but your opponent isn't technically scoring either. So it kind of you know balances itself out and you're still able to really hold it because you're going to end up winning that hill if you score more points, but just deny the other team some points but you're not actually scoring more and creating more of a gap for later on in the game so let's go through the top five right now so we have a tie to start off at number five with terminal p4 and we're going to also talk about karachi p3 these two hills are once again one of the easier ones to hold and soak points on uh, honestly this terminal p4 is higher on the list in terms of actually holds i believe it's number two but because of the ability for both teams to start breaking in through some tax you know you do get these weird stalemates of white time where you might kill someone off the hill after you know all the trophies have been broken and then you basically just have a standoff between these two teams whether you know you're coming from the security side or whether you're coming from the p1 side and you have these you know really important gunfights right over here where people are just trying to make sure that no one crosses into the hill to start getting that time so if you're not actually soaking that hill you're going to see a lot of white time but in those situations where you aren't able to push on in and actually start to fight and contest these gunfights and get that person off the hill there's going to be a lot of times where teams teams are literally just soaking in here and if you can really make sure that they don't get tacked out and really just kill these guys before they're able to actually do something uh, in terms of actually killing your guy towards that p4 you're really going to be set up for a decent money hill because of how easy it is to just stay low on time without getting hit by anything especially if your team is getting kills on this cross so the average score for the team that wins rotation is 36 and the opponent is nine so that difference of 27 makes it at fifth place tied with that karachi p3 and we'll move over to Karachi right now. So I'll move over to this Karachi P3. This is going to be the bar hill over here with the team that wins the rotation averaging 37 points with the opponent averaging 10 points. So once again, a 27 point differential just for winning the rotation. And when I say winning rotation, it's a majority of the first 10 points scored. I don't necessarily care if they were the first to the hill because I really want to make sure that I'm getting the team with that you know dominant control because a team can get on the hill and then instantly get wiped out. So it's not not really like they actually won the rotation so that's how I usually do rotation wins so this is that p3 rotation the big thing with the hold on this hill is that the opponents are going to be spawning super deep you know out here you know towards p2 or back castle and they're going to have to take these routes whether it's you know through middle through coop or through useless over here and break on in so honestly there are you know a good amount of areas to actually watch on the break but because you're able to spawn them out so deep if you just get that first wave of kills it's pretty much going to be a whole every single time just because it's going to be so much harder to break later on in and teams are probably just going to end up trying to rotate pretty early going into that p4 because it's just not worth it to try another attempt on that p3 again so moving into the number four spot is another terminal hill. This time we're talking about the Books P5 hill. So this is a really important hill in terms of the actual chain from P4 to P5. We talked about P4 being a big money hill. P5 is just another big money hill because of the spawns and how they work on this map and because of the ways that you can actually hold this hill in terms of the lanes you have to cover. So you'll see a common theme on terminal in you know the next few weeks when matches start going on. But this P4 to P5 chain is such an important chain of hills for teams to actually create a crazy gap in their lead or come back later on in the game if they're down a huge deficit so these chain of hills just because they're two back-to-back -back money hills where they basically have the same good spawns where you know you want to be controlling this top security of side of the map and spawning towards this dream side so if you're able to spawn towards this dream side towards this top and the enemy team is spawning you know, towards this s key side it's going to be super easy if you end up holding this p4 and this p4 scrap for you to 
you know, just rotate, you know, a few steps over towards this P5 and really lock down both those hills and get a huge amount of points within just two hills that are combined with each other. So let's say you're holding this P4 at the end of the hill and you maintain control of this Burger Town. You have this P1 lane. If you're already, you know, spawning towards dreams, it's an easy rotation to actually get into the hill and play with someone that might be, let's say, on this tree helping you out. And then also have someone, you know, at this desk, maybe watching this lane. So basically every lane towards this P5 is covered and you're making sure you're just having these good spawns constantly on this map. It's going to be a huge theme. I'm going to talk about a lot in any terminal vids I do, but all of these hills basically rely on you being on this top side of the map because of the way the rotation and the map works. You know, you don't want to be fighting this uphill battle where you're spawning eskies and you don't have these power positions of trying to get into, you know, P1, P4, P5, and P2. So the Books Hill comes in the number four position with teams winning rotation, averaging 39 points and their opponents averaging 11 points for a 28 point differential. That's good for the number four spot. Coming in at number three, we're staying on terminal. So once again, a common theme, this is gonna be P2, the Dreams Hill. As long as you're making sure that you're holding down this side of the map, as I was talking about before, it's gonna be super easy for you to maintain control of this. If you have control of this back area towards security, the tree, you know, this desk, this golf cart over here, it's just really nice headies that you can use for anyone on the enemy team that might be trying to break on in. You know, let's say they're spawning eskies, they're spawning out. They either have to take the route of going through Burger Hill where you're going to be met with them, you know, while you're watching from security or from this tree over here, or they have to go down this hall. And once that happens, you can either see them cross. Let's say if you're playing inside P5, you see them cross here and they still have to come through this choke point. So anyone that might be on the golf court or the desk can see, or even the guy that's on a hill can even see this push as well. So if you want to take those two routes, it's kind of getting stuff from no matter where you have to watch. And then even if they wanted to take a route through the plane, it's just going to be an easy pickup for any of these guys playing one of these headies here so they can look and see if they're trying to go through terminal that way. And at that point, you're just locking everything down. They're going to continue to spawn eskies and it's just going to be a super easy hill for you to hold as long as you guys don't scam, to be honest. So that moves on to the number three position with teams that win the rotation scoring 40 points on average and their opponents scoring 11 11 points, so an average of a 29 point differential for that money hill. Coming in at number two is gonna be Skid Row P2. This is a really, really big money hill for teams, specifically because of how easy it is to hold on time and hold these crosses, whether they're coming from, you know, this P3 side trying to break on in or coming through this tunnel side. It's just gonna be super open areas that they have to funnel through to make sure they actually even have a chance of breaking on in. And from this position, you can either have the guy on time or even someone off the bottom bottom of the hill as well, just watching these crosses, make sure that you're at least peppering some shots. And then you have some other players that might be playing closer. Let's say this guy is playing in P5, watching the tunnel push. And maybe you have another guy that might be in this corner, you know, watching garage. But the way this works is you're just holding these easy, easy crosses, especially if you're just using ARs on this hill, you're going to be seeing four ARs a lot of the times on these hills. And what happens is even if you're dying on these cuts, you're still spawning into situations where you can just pinch on to anyone that might have be taking their time on to break or even sometimes you'll see people spawn in garage after they've already died like p5 so what happens is they die on p5 but they're actually able to you know hold this cut once more so they're spawning into a secondary cut where the team has to actually kill them twice to even get onto that hill so whether you're spawning super close like this or whether you're spawning farther out but you're still having a you know free pinch on anyone that might be taking their time because they're gonna have to take a lot of time to actually break on into this so it's not like they can just rush towards p2 and you're just you know free to break on into it, they're on a timer because you're spawning out behind them and you can try and kill them while they're attempting to actually break on in. So super big money hill, super easy way to hold down this hill, especially if you have these AR lanes covered. You know, every team is doing this. Even teams are rotating at, you know, 55 seconds in P1 just to make sure that they can lock down this P2 and start getting a lot of points from it. So Skid Row comes in the number two position with the rotation winner scoring an average of 43 points and the opponent scoring an average of only eight points. That that makes it good for a 35 point differential, making it number two on the list. And you probably had a feeling of what was coming in at that number one position, but what do you know? It's Invasion P5, the hardest hill to break on Modern Warfare 3 at the current moment and the biggest money hill simply because of the way the map is structured, the way you are able to actually spawn up simply into crosses after you even died, the way that you're able to hold these different headies on the map, making sure that you're holding these lanes, these super big open lanes that they have to funnel through in order to try and even attempt to break it 
it. You'll see teams rotating even at the end of P3 going into the P5 just to make sure that they can get, you know, a full 60 going into that P5 because it's such an important hill to actually get some points on, you know, get in a really big lead or making sure that you're cutting a really big deficit if you can make P4 mixy and start getting back into the game. So, you know, once again, you have all these power positions, top flag over here, the different headies on the wall. Even if you're playing in P5, you can see out this window and see this P2 lane. And even if those enemies are able to start killing these people on these power positions, they'll need to be blocking P2 and this street area so that you spawn out even deeper. But if they're getting these kills, it's most likely that they're not also blocking these two different areas. So what happens is you end up just spawning in one of these open spawns and you're able to just spawn up and instantly get the cut right away for anyone that might be coming through this P2 side that just got a kill uh, before they can even reach on into the hill or you know once again on this other side if you're spawning P2 and they're coming from this A street lane you can instantly cut them off this way. So you're spawning into these cuts similar to like what I was talking about on the skid row and once again it's just super hard to break on in even if you get inside this palace you're still going to have to win a one-on-one -on -one gunfight on the guy in hill and he can be playing a multitude of corners. So this is just a huge money hill for anyone that can win that rotation to the P5. You're going to be seeing a lot of teams rotate super early to us and coming into that number one position with an average of 44 points scored for the rotation winner and an average of seven points scored for the opponent. You're looking at a 37 point differential for this invasion P5, making it number one on the list. So that's going to do it. Those are the top five money hills going into major one based on scrim data. Let me know your thoughts. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope you guys can utilize this type of info when you start playing these hardpoint maps with a team or just by yourself in pubs. Thank you guys for making it to the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.